Hey, how's it going, everyone? It's Max Fisher here from A Better Universe, and it's uh, it's our Weekend Warrior series. And you know, I was kind of a little bit at a loss today. I was, you know, thinking uh, sometimes you know your creative genius isn't always on. So just kind of looking for things to talk about. And um, my sister sent me this good article about uh, the ability of the human consciousness to collapse the wave function in the double slit experiment which is a quantum physics experiment that basically show I'll link the video in it so you guys can see it but basically if you think about this as something think about a machine that shoots marbles and you have one slit and you know we'll say this construction is made out of metal on one side and you have one slit in the metal and on the back side is a paper wall uh, so as you shoot marbles and they're randomly shot at every direction and interval inside um, you're going to have a certain defined line on the back of the paper wall from where the marbles can go through. And the double slit experiment, if you shot those marbles through, you'd have two defined lines, correct? So, um, and then if you think about a wave, just like a normal wave, a wake or whatever created, in the single slit experiment, you have the most intensity um, if you looked at the back wall and you could find out where the most intensity in the wave was, you would see it was directly in line with that single slit. Now when there's a double slit and the wave goes through, the wave functions of both the waves interact with each other to a certain point where the tops of the waves create the most intensity and the in-betweens cancel each other out. So you have something that's considered an interference pattern. Basically, you have the most intensity at the center where the two waves combined and met, and then it slowly fades out. So, in that, in the experiment, in the double slit experiment, um, they originally fired electrons through a single slit, and it made the single line on the back end of uh, our so-called paper wall. In the double slit experiment, when they shot electrons, which is supposed to be a little tiny uh, particle, a little bit of matter, um, they came up with an interference pattern like it was a wave function. So this confused them. They weren't sure what this meant. Um, so they started putting in uh, an observation device in front of the slits to observe which ones they were actually going through and why they were creating this interference pattern and acting like a wave function instead of a particle like they consider an electron to be. So when they shot these uh, electrons through this double slit experiment with the observer looking through the slit, it created that uh, those two singular lines on the back. The observation itself collapsed the quantum wave function, which is the improbability of you know the universe so just through observation of the scientists they collapsed the quantum wave function and produced a, a probability a certain directed outcome um, now further along this what this article was really dealing with was uh, the power of um, people and meditators to be able to affect the double slit experiment and the permutation uh, permutations of the interference so basically they wanted to see that if a meditator or just even a regular person had focused certainly on one side opposed to the other in the double slit experiment if you would be able to see a ratio or a statistical difference in the interference pattern um, because they didn't want to observe the particles, they just wanted to see if they could influence the particles. So that way, um, not only do they keep the particle, the so-called particle of matter, into a, in a wave function by not observing it, but they can also, they also found that they can influence. The meditators had a strong statistical influence on the ratio of the permutations on the back of the wall and the interference pattern, meaning that they could direct them left or right, and when they relax their attention, the permutations on the back or permutations on the back of the wall matched a regular, um, just a regular interference pattern with the um, highest intensity being in the middle and slowly fading out to the sides. So, with that said, I know that that was a lot of um, physics, and uh, I don't really have a great uh, visual. Um, visual model to show you so I'll link the video below or the article below and it has a nice little animation video that'll explain more of this to you guys but basically the 
why I'm telling you all this is because your conscious thought, your very ability to perceive things and how you perceive it and your intent will not only, can not only direct the outcome of your life, but it can also statistically change the outcome and the probability of something happening. So with the ability of these meditators to, um, you know, to influence the ratio, either this side or that, suppose, you know, this side of the spectrum is ultimate good, this side of the spectrum is ultimate evil, and in the middle is, you know, a normal, just a normal neutral path. And if you have the ability to influence the probability over to, you know, a good outcome for yourself, wouldn't you want to take that probability and put the most amount of your own choice and influence into that? See, now the problem is most people don't think they have this ability. Most people, I mean, they say that the meditators had the most, uh, the highest outcome, the strongest statistical difference, but they even saw that through people who didn't meditate, they still had the ability to change the outcome. Just their conscious thought changes the, the it collapses the weight, the quantum wave function. So, and furthermore, on top of this, I want to you know, talk about observing you know, once you observe where what choice you want to make, you can, you know, direct it towards a good outcome or not. But when they observed the electron, when they shot it, it didn't have a wave function anymore. It just assumed mass as a particle. So when you observe what you want, when you observe a goal, when you observe, um, you know, your mission, your life, your dream, when you observe it and know it into yourself, you collapse that quantum wave function and you almost... I want to say you have a certain reliability that you can make whatever you want to happen in whatever time period that you want. You just have to overcome this, you know, overcome yourself. Lao Tzu always said, if there's no enemy within, there's uh, no enemy outside. The enemy outside can do you no harm. I apologize for butchering that. But what I think he really meant, because that quote kind of confused me for a long time. I always thought... What do you mean if there's no enemy within the enemy outside can do you no harm? They can shoot you, they can stab you, they can poke you, prod you, all those great things. So I was just always very confused. And um, and uh, it was just, it kind of baffled my mind for a while. But now I think I understand that if you observe where you want to go, if you observe, if you put intent towards things, that the outcome isn't, isn't, unlikely and unprobable and in on somebody else's hands your your destiny is completely made of your own choice and intent i don't know if that's exactly what lao Tzu meant by that but that seems to be my understanding as of now as of you know this moment and uh maybe i'll have a deeper understanding out one day but this is huge that the scientific community is starting to catch up with these ideas that uh basically everything that we see here is just conscious thought and intent and um, universal consciousness is really what's determining our weather, our, you know, atmosphere, our, the toxicity of chemicals and the, you know, how we take care of nature and everything that's here. So, uh, I don't know how, I feel like it's my responsibility to tell you guys this kind of information because, you know, You've already agreed, you've already opened up to some degree. If you're into personal development, you kind of, I wouldn't necessarily say you have to take this on board, these ideas, but you are more open to these ideas. You're more open to, you know, changing yourself and um, fulfilling ideas and ways to, you know, better yourself and become the most. So as my responsibility to give this information to you, it's your responsibility to pass this on to other people, to make sure that we're bringing conscious intent and not just, you know, negative emotions into this world. Uh, we all have a certain responsibility to bring whatever we have to give into this world, but um, everyone doesn't necessarily think that they're ready to give what they have, but even just these little words of advice, um, showing the scientific evidence for those that are logically minded and, you know, don't believe in esoteric ideas, uh, have a hard time, you know, if they don't see it, they don't believe it. So you have to make the, make the change in them, help them see it so they can believe it, help them give them the evidence to prove that it's true and, um, you know, that they should take conscious thought and what they're thinking about all day and not to hold on to grudges and negative emotions and, you know, spread the love and 
everything that's going to make this humanity a peaceful generation with uh, with the utmost um, care for you know those that are less fortunate and trying to bring about an equality to the humanity and not just uh, just selfish urge to you know complete our compulsions that we've built on. So this is your weekend warrior series. I know I wasn't you know super upbeat and but this information is very pertinent. I feel like there's a certain amount of research that you guys should go and do after hearing me say these things. Don't just take my word for it. Go and do your own due diligence. Find out, um, find out if it's true. Look, compare data. Try and find something that says it's not true. I mean, look at it all points. Uh, you can't say you know everything if when we know almost nothing about the actual universe and what's beyond this, just this Earth. So, with that said, this is Max Fisher here from Better Universe, your mind-body-spirit connection. We're starting to catch up. Science is starting to catch up with the spirit. But if you want to be ahead of science, you want to be ahead of everyone else, you need to start learning your inner workings, how to control your mind, your body, your energy, because they seem to have a lot more influence than we currently believe. All right, you guys go hit it. Get on your goals, make your dreams happen, and make sure you're using your intent to collapse that quantum wave function and determine your outcome. All right, thanks guys, later.